This is the range country, where the pounding hooves of untamed horses still thunder over mountains, meadows, and canyons. Every herd has its own leader, but there is only one fury. Fury, king of the wild stallions. And here in the wild west of today, hard-riding men still battle the open range for a living. Men like Jim Newton, owner of the Broken Wheel Ranch, and Pete, his top hand, who says he cut his teeth on a branding iron. Wild as Fury is, that's the one human voice he's learned to love and obey. The voice of the boy who once saved his life, Jim Newton's boy, Joey. a mutual trust and affection that everyone can understand. Especially a woman like Helen Watkins, Joey's school teacher and unfailing champion. Kneel down, let me get on you. And there they are together, a great wild horse and the only person on earth who can ride him, Joey and Fury. Let you and I take a shortcut and beat him back to the ranch. been giving me that news ten times a day for a week now. Well, Val is the best there is. And even if he is in a wheelchair, bet I could learn lots of rodeo tricks from him. But just remember, a champion cowboy always takes care of his horse first. Then his horse will be in shape to help him be champion. I always take care of Fury. Don't I, Fury? <laughs> <laughs> Pete. Thanks, Jim. Hiya, Pete. Long time no see. I reckon it's been more than a year. Here, let me help you in the house. Pete, Val's got some baggage in there. Would you pick it up, please? I see you got me all the comforts of home. Oh, I thought you'd want to go up and down stairs by yourself. You're right. Just point me, Jim. This is one Maverick I can ride. I thought Joey would be in long before this. I told him a champion cowboy always takes care of his horse. Mm. So he's out rubbing down fury so he'll look real pretty when Val sees him. <laughs> Say, Pete. Yeah? You remember what I told you and Joey about Val's visit? Well, you told us a heap of things. Now, look, just remember this. We've got our work to do here on the ranch, and we're going to go on doing it the same as ever. I reckon we'll have to give a little extra attention to Val. We're going to treat Val like any other guest here. No special privileges, even if he is in a wheelchair. Understand? Hi. Where's Al Benton? Come on in. I'll introduce you to him. OK. Val, this is my boy, Joey. Howdy. Gosh, Mr. Benton. I'm sure pleased to meet you. Guess you're kind of surprised to see me riding this, huh? No, Jim told me he had an accident. Guess you'll be back riding Broncos any time now. I heard you've got a pretty woolly bronc yourself. Oh, Fury's no bronco. Wait till you see him. He's a champion like you. I'd sure like to meet him. I'll go and get him. Hey, wait a minute, young man. Val can say hello to Fury later on. Right now, you got to go get cleaned up for dinner. I won't be long. We're having steak and mushroom and blueberry pie. <laughs> sure a fine boy, Jim. Oh, uh, thanks. Here, look at this. He's your number one fan, Val. Ever since I told him that you and I used to go rodeoing together, he's been collecting stories and pictures and everything about you. I guess there won't be any more pictures to collect. Well, the book's almost full anyway. 
You're one cowpoke I could count on not to go soft on me, Jim. That's one of the reasons why I accepted your invitation. Don't expect the same service here you got at that fancy hospital. They can keep that place. Another couple of months there and I'd have gone crazy. The way they kept after me with those bars and things, trying to get me to walk again. Well, I heard they got you out of this chair a few times. Yeah, once. I got up with the help of those parallel bars. Took one step and went flat on my face. They picked me up and said I was doing fine. In a year, maybe two, I could walk a little. With a couple of canes. This wheelchair gets me around fine. I don't need any of that other stuff. Well, you won't get any of that other stuff here. You'll be on your own, mostly. Pete and I have our work to do. Joey will be in school most of the day. That suits me fine. I never had a minute's peace in the hospital. People from the rodeo, friends, strangers wanting autographs, with their get-well-quick grins and their cheery pep talks. I was fed up to hear with it. Well, that's what you get for being a world champion cowboy. I guess I shouldn't kick, Jim. I made a lot of money and I saved most of it. Anyway, this, this ranch will be a nice place to think about it. Yeah, well, I, I guess you're right, Val. Yeah, that rodeo circuit's old stuff. Glad I got out of it when I did. Hm. The glaring spotlights and the, the screaming of the crowds. <laughs> I feel the bronc under you when you're coming out of that chute. No, that's no kind of life for a man. Well, I guess I'll go see how Pete's doing with dinner. Come on, Neil. What's all this about? <laughs> Joey's got an idea that the broken wheel is being turned into a rodeo training ground. <laughs> Good, Fury. Now up. <laughs> that kid. You know, he had Val talking for a whole hour about the Calgary Stampede. You know, Jim, I can't figure Val out. He seems mighty contented in that wheelchair of his. I don't think so, Pete. I think he hangs onto that chair like a shield. What do you mean? Well, the doctor said that if Val really tried, someday he could walk. Why in tarnation does he sit in that wheelchair? Well, there's a kind of a... kind of a fear that gnaws away at a man, Pete. Holds him back. I think that's happening to Val. The doctor sort of figures that the Val hangs onto that chair to prove that nothing can be done for him. Maybe somebody ought to set off a stick of dynamite under him. You know what I think? I think it's Val that has to do the blasting. That's a good boy. Now you watch me. I guess I need a little practice, too. Hi, Joey. Hi, Val. I'm going to show Val a new trick. Hi, Val. Did you see Fury kneeling? Yeah, that was real fancy. Did it take you long to teach him? No, Fury learns fast. We're practicing for the next junior rodeo. Watch. You sure never going to win any roping contest that way. Here, let me show you. Now, you gotta watch me closely, because it's all on your wrist. Gosh! Swell. <laughs> That's pretty good, Val. Pete? Maybe Joey's rope is the... It's a fuse that'll set off that dynamite under Val's wheelchair. I thought you said he didn't like anybody but you. He doesn't get that friendly with everybody. He likes you, don't you, Fury? <laughs> Understands everything you say, huh? Sure, that's why it's so easy for me to teach him things. You ought to see the trophy he helped me win in the last junior rodeo. I bet you didn't have much competition. Sure did. It was a miracle we didn't lose. Oh, I don't believe it was a miracle, Joey. You and Fury were just the best entry. Well, sometimes you can be the best, but something happens. And it looks like you haven't got a chance. But if you keep on having faith, a miracle can happen, and you win. You really believe that, Joey? Uh-huh. 
Did you ever tell Jim about this miracle? Well, no, he never asked me. But Fury knows about it. I wish I were your size again. Why? So I could believe in miracles. Well, size has nothing to do with it. Miracles can happen to all kinds of people. If you want something good to happen, all you've got to do is believe hard enough. You know, Joey, not so long ago, I believed so very hard that I'd walk again. But nothing happened. No miracle. Just a wheelchair. Well, I wish for an awful lot of things and never got them. But that didn't stop me from keeping on wishing and believing. And then when things really count, and I really believe in them, they come true. And one day you're going to walk, I know. I'd give anything in the world if, if I could only believe like you do, Joey. Hey, you got some pretty good ones here. Uh-huh. Where's Val? I think he's out on the porch. Can I see him for a minute? Well, just for a minute, then. Bed. Thanks, Jim. Hi, Val. Back to see my scrapbook? Sure, Joey. It seems to me you could have found something more interesting to collect than pictures of me. Lots of kids collect pictures of you, but I got the best collection. Could you sign your autograph in it? Well, I, I haven't got a pen. Here, use mine. Mm, not in the back. Could you sign it in the front, please? You got a lot of empty pages. Could have saved yourself some money and got a smaller book. I'll fill them up when you start back in the rodeo. Gee, that's swell. Why don't I show that to the kid at school? Say, maybe you could ride down tomorrow and meet some of them. Joey, you know I couldn't do that. Guess not if you don't want to. Well, good night, Val. Good night, Joey. Must have taken him a long time to collect all those pictures. Oh, he gets a kick out of it, Val. Yeah, I guess there won't be any more to fill out the rest of the book. Why not? Life and career of Val Benton, champion cowboy, stops. That's where Joey pasted the last picture, right in the middle of the book. I guess it's up to you whether the rest of that book is a series of blank pages. special to ask for you, besides blessing everybody. It's Val Benton. You know, the one you made a champion cowboy. Well, he doesn't think he can walk, and he doesn't even try. But if he did, he'd be able to. Maybe you could help him stand up, and if he tried hard enough, he'd walk. That's what I heard Jim say, and he ought to know. Thank you. Amen.
What's the trouble, battery? I wish I knew. Well, let me know when you find out. We have to go to town this afternoon. Pete and I are going into town. Can we bring you anything? Well, what's eating you? You haven't said half a dozen words since you got up this morning. Now, come on, what is it? I'm a little fed up being a burden around here. I'm not able to do anything. Don't even pay my way. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll charge your board and room. You can afford it, and I can use the money. Better figure my bill for the time I've stayed. Your bill's paid. That roping lesson you gave Joey squares it. Jim, last night I, I tried to get out of this chair. Fell flat on my face again. Look, what do you want me to do? Give you a shoulder to cry on? Jim, believe me, I don't feel sorry for myself. I just can't face Joey. Joey? Were well, you trying to tell me that Joey made you get out of the chair? In a way, he did. I was out on the porch last night. I heard him praying. There's nothing unusual about that. He says his prayers every night. I know, but last night he prayed for me. Prayed that I'd at least try to walk. Well, you did try. I let him down. I don't think so. Well, looks like Pete's got the car fixed. You sure there's nothing we can bring you? No, thanks. Well, at least you tried. Joey. There's mud on you and it hasn't been raining. It's Joey, isn't it, Fury? He's in trouble. <laughs> Steady, boy. Stay there now. Steady, boy. Steady. Let's go.
Take it easy, Joey. We'll get you out. Don't bring Siri closer. There's quicksand here. You've got more sense than I have. Another step and we'd be trapped, too. No! Hurry! I'm still sinking! Don't lose your head, Joey. Oh, Lord. Put your hands up over your head. Joey, when I pull, push with your hands. I'm standing, Joey. I'm standing, as if there was nothing ever wrong with my legs. It's like a miracle. It is a miracle, Joey. It's a miracle, just like you read about. Come on, let's go back to the ranch and make a junk pile out of that wheelchair. <laughs> That's not quite it. Jump down a minute and I'll show you. <laughs> that horse of yours. Jerry let me ride him once, but he had a special reason. <laughs> That's right, Bell. Joey's still Fury's favorite cowboy. Well, one miracle's plenty to happen to a man. I guess it would take another one before Fury would let me ride him again. <laughs> 